When Transit was first released, many people were using it like this. But that was Transit 1. This is Transit 2. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Transit, as its name suggests, is really good at transitions, especially during build-ups. But when I used it for the first time, I felt that it had so much more potential than that. And I hoped for features in version two that would reflect that. Well, it's as if Baby Audio, in conjunction with Andrew Huang, were reading my mind because they've added kind of exactly the features that I was hoping for, making it, in my opinion, the best plugin of 2024, or at very least, the best value for money plugin. Now more on that later. Also later, I'll be giving a pro tip to you guitarists out there who are hoping to use this plugin in real time. But before all that, just in case you're new to Transit, let me get you up to speed. To get started with Transit, I need to populate at least one of the seven module slots we can see here. I'm gonna start off by adding in one of the new modules for this version called Retro Reverb. Now, now you can see right away with this module that one of the controls has this blue ring around it. This indicates that it's going to be affected as I make use of my main transition knob over here on the left hand side. And you can see that in action right away. Now I can adjust the range of effect by grabbing the handles on the end of this blue ring like so and making the range in this case a lot smaller. And you can see that in effect as I adjust my transition control on the left. We can also reverse that range by right clicking on the control and it turns pink to indicate that now it's going to be happening in reverse and again you can see that in action right away. Now one of the nice things we can do is adjust the slope. We do that just by dragging on this line that we can see in the middle here and now as I've adjusted that slope you can see that when I change the transition control the effect is much quicker at the beginning and slows down towards the end. It's a really nice organic kind of feeling to that. Now of course you could do all of this with automation using your existing plugins in your door but it would get a lot more complex for you as you added in more controls. Let's do that right away by clicking on the little circles in the middle here to switch motion on for a couple of the other controls. I'll adjust the range and the slope again like so. Now to get the kind of motion that we're using now as I adjust the transition knob, it would take at least three lanes of automation in your door. Let me load up now a preset that I was using right at the beginning where I was making use of six of the seven module slots here. And as I adjust my transition knob, you can see that a lot of the controls in the various modules are being affected. And it would take many lanes of automation to do that normally but in this case I was using just one lane of automation let's have a look at that in action So the most obvious use for this is in situations like the one I demonstrated there in a kind of a build up in a song. But I always thought that there was much more to this plugin than that. I always felt that you could use it really creatively by automating that transition knob throughout a performance. Well now, in version two, both Baby Audio and Andrew Huang have made that process a lot simpler and a lot more fun. In the example so far, I'd inserted Transit 2 onto the master bus, so it was affecting the whole mix. But to demonstrate some of these new features, I've now inserted it onto an individual instrument track, that being a synth sound that I was using. Now just so that you know what you're listening for later on when you hear it in the mix i'm quickly just going to play it for you in solo now
Now here again, you saw me affecting it using this big transition control here. And that's because we're in macro mode at the moment. But in Transit 2, we have five additional modes to choose from. And we access them by clicking on the label at the top here. The first of these additional modes is LFO. Now this is a timing based mode where the speed of the movement is controlled with the rate control up here. You can also control range, the wave type, and the smoothness as well. The easiest way to understand this is to look and to listen. Now what I love about this is you get that repetitive and musical motion without having to write any automation whatsoever. So this is really nice. The next mode I'm gonna look at is the follower mode. Now with this mode, it's listening to the intensity of the incoming signal and responding to that. Now how much it responds depends on the detection control here. We also have control over the range, the attack and the release. So let's have a listen and a look to this one. So you can see there that the motion was only happening when the synth was playing those little stabs. Now similar to this is the side chain mode. But in this occasion, rather than listening to that synth, it's gonna be listening to another source in our project. Now exactly how you set that side chain up depends on your particular door. So I'm not gonna demonstrate that here, but in my door, I've set it up so it's gonna be listening to the bass guitar but adding the effect to the synth. Let's have a look at this one. So again, a great effect. And if you had to automate this, it would be very time consuming indeed. So this is a big time saver, this one. Moving on, let's go to the gate mode. Now with this one, the motion is only happening while we hold one of these buttons down. As soon as we release it, the motion stops. Now the speed of the motion is affected by which one of these buttons we press. So you're gonna see it move up and down as I hold my mouse down on one of these buttons. Let's have a try. Now, as you saw, it just played through once there, but we can set it to a kind of a ping pong effect with this pendulum control here. And also we can make it loop here as well. Let's try that again. Now, similar to this is also the sequencer mode, but unlike the gate mode, this is not gonna play immediately as soon as you press one of these buttons. It's gonna wait till the next bar before it starts to play the motion. So let's have a look at this one. And again, you saw it just played through once there, but again, we can set up a pendulum and we can set up a loop as well. But these are not the only new features in Transit 2. So Transit 2 has 10 new modules included, bringing the total up to 28 modules. Now I want you to think about this for a moment because I know that this plugin is going to be launching at around about $79 or so, meaning that each effect within it is only costing you around about $2.80. That's like getting 28 new plugins, if you like, for $2.80. $2.80 each. It's definitely worth checking out the link in the description down below for that alone. But of course, there's so much more to it than that. With these different modes and your ability to create transitions between different settings on these effects, you're going to be possibly creating things that you wouldn't otherwise 
have created. So definitely check out the link below. Now, in terms of the new modules, we have a new analog chorus module here. There was previously a chorus module, but this one's got a bit more of an analog sort of flavor to it. We also have a great compressor module in here. And personally, I think that a lot of people could learn about UI design from this very simple little compressor. There's also an EQ in there. We have a loop module. There's a modulation filter module. And then moving on from these, we also have a new pitch module in there. There's previously a pitch module, but this one's a little bit sort of cleaner, I suppose. We also have a retro reverb, an additional reverb module to the one that was previously there. And this one's got more of a, a sort of a analog gritty flavor to it, if you like. We've also got a reverser module in there, a great speaker module, which replicates a, a small speaker sound, and then a warp module, which is so much fun. Basically, really great for sort of making things sound like they're slowing down or speeding up. So pretty good for the end of tracks and things. <laughs> One of the magical things about music production is when happy accidents occur. When you accidentally play the wrong chord on your guitar, for example, but it turns out it actually sounds quite a lot better. It feels like there's some divine intervention happening. Well, they've tried to incorporate that into this plugin with the randomized feature. You can see it at the top of the plugin here. It looks like a little die. And when we click on it, you can see that all of the settings are changing and lots of different modules are swapping out as well. But you may notice that the top three modules, the phaser, delay, and filter 24 are staying the same. And that's because I've made use of the lock feature. If we click on that, then we can control which things stay in place and which things are randomized. So I had actually locked those three modules there. I could also lock things like particular settings as well. Now talking about the lock feature, we also have a lock feature on our main control over here. In this case, it's set to macro, but as you saw earlier, we could say, for example, set it to, let's say, gate. Now, once I've got it on gate, I might think, you know, I always want to use gate, but uh, if I select a different preset, for example, I want to make sure it's locked in there. So I can lock it as a gate, and then if I go and select another preset like so, Whatever I do, even though the modules and their settings have changed, the gate has stayed there. That's locked in place. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I've got a pro tip for you guitarists who may be using this plugin. And I've got to tell you, I had a lot of fun doing this. What I did was I took this very affordable expression pedal and I plugged it into my MIDI controller keyboard. That enabled me to send expression MIDI messages through to the plugin. Transit 2 has a MIDI learn function, which made this super easy. And what that meant was that while I was recording my guitar and both of my hands were busy, I was able to affect the sound of the guitar in real time. It was a lot of fun and it felt really, really organic. Take a look at foot cam. Now, if you happen to be a Transit 1 user, you can upgrade to Transit 2 for just $29. That gives you those five extra modes and those 10 extra modules. Great value for money when you really think about it. Check out the link for that in the description down below. I'd love to hear all of your thoughts on this plugin. Is it something that you think you're gonna make use of in your productions? Maybe you've already been using it. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video.